the Great Lakes are perhaps um, among the most treacherous waters in the world. And this particular song concerns a meteorological phenomenon known as the White Squall. The, uh, the Lakers know of it, and well they should, because since 1830, over 150 ships have been lost, and, and they've been lost, their loss has been directly attributed to these white squalls. You'll have a beautiful day, much like today, a little less wind. You'll be moving along the lake, having a wonderful time, everything's fine. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, absolutely out of nowhere, the white squall will come along, winds gusting up to 100 knots. It only lasts four or five, maybe ten minutes, and at the end of that, um, unless you're very sharp, unless your ship is uh, very, a very good sailor, then you're going to wind up on the bottom of the lake, like as not. 150 ships in the last 150 years disappeared without a trace, without any warning. This song also mentions the town of Wyerton. Very near here. Wyerton has supplied more senior officers for the Great Lakes shipping fleets than any other town in Canada. This is called White Squall. Two, three, four. Now it's just my luck to have the watch with nothing left to do. But watch the deadly waters glide as we roll north to the Sioux. And wonder when they'll turn again and pitch us to the rail and whirl off one more youngster in the game. The kid was so damn eager, it was all so big and new. You never had to tell him twice or find him work to do. And evenings on the mess deck. He was always first to sing and show us pictures of the girl he'd wed in spring. But I told that kid a hundred times, don't you take these lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred knots, so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight some red-eyed wireton girl lies staring at the wall. And her lover's gone into a white squall. Now it's a thing that us old timers know in a sultry summer calm. There comes a blow from nowhere, and it goes off like a bomb. And a Tonner can be thrown upon her beam while the gale takes all before it with a scream. The kid was on the hatches, lying staring at the sky. From where I stood, I swear I could see tears fall from his eyes. So I hadn't the heart to tell him that he should be on a line. Even on a night so warm and fine. But I told that kid a hundred times, don't take these lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred knots, so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight some red-eyed wireton girl lies staring at the wall. And her lover's gone into a white squall. When it struck, he sat up with a start. I roared to him, get down. But from all that he could hear, I could as well not make a sound. So I clung there to the stanchions, and I felt my face go pale as he crawled hand over hand along the rail. Well, I could feel her healing over with 
the fury of the blow. I watched the rail go under, then so terrible and slow. Then like some great dog, she shook herself and roared upright again. Far over her side, I heard him call my name. But I told that kid a hundred times, don't take these legs for granted. They go from calm to a hundred knots, so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight, some red-eyed, wired girl lies staring at the wall, and her lover's gone into a white squall. So it's just my luck to have the watch with nothing left to do. But watch the deadly waters glide as we roll north to the Sioux. And wonder when they'll turn again and pitch us to the rail. And whirl off one more youngster in the game. As I tell these kids a hundred times, don't take the lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred knots, so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight, some red-eyed, wired girl lies staring at the wall. And her lover's gone into a white squall.